What's up, everybody? This is CEO of Exact IT Solutions, Brian Horning, coming at you with another Week in Breach video. It is a Wednesday, February 12th, 2020, and it's been a busy week already here with cybersecurity breaches uh, here in the U.S. and around the globe, and I'm here to highlight just a few of them for you. Um, you know, the goal of, of these videos is to show uh, business owners and CEOs that every business is a target and it's not a matter of if but when and i'm sure you've heard that a million times before but um the point of these videos is to highlight how frequently this stuff happens how the variety and the um you know basically the faceless part of businesses that exist with cyber criminals that they don't care who they're attacking they just go in they see what they have and then they move on or they perpetrate an attack um, so there's a lot of different things to be concerned about with cybersecurity, but to know that if you own a business or you run a company, you are a target. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, um, that you may think you're too small or you're not that important or you're not that popular or you're the business that flies under the radar. No businesses fly under the radar when it comes to cybersecurity, which is why it's important to have a good cybersecurity plan in place unlike these companies who we're about to go over today. And to top the list, we're going to talk about the big news from Monday where the DOJ um, indicted or named four um, individuals within the Chinese uh, military that and deemed them responsible for the Equifax, Equifax breach that happened uh, several years ago. Um, the investigation took this long. It took them a lot of time to do forensic uh, uh uh, uh, investigations on the data and what went on uh, during this breach. But at the end of the day, it was determined that it was a state-sponsored um, act that was carried out by the Chinese government to steal United States citizens' personally identifiable information. They have it. God knows what they're going to do with it. But they were the ones who perpetrated the attack, and they took it and our government said their government was responsible for it. Um, so watch my video on cyber insurance to learn about the effects of when our government um, deems another government responsible for an attack and how it affects your business. Um, so uh, another big one is U.S. Bank. They, they had a breach and they were basically slammed for vague and deceptive um, breach disclosures. Now, uh, what happened here is that uh, a few employees, I think two or three employees um, that were on the payroll at Fifth Third Bank had access to personally identifiable information, including um, names, phone numbers, home addresses, social security numbers, um, income information, things like that that you would give a bank when you're opening an account or applying for a loan. These uh, individuals had access to that as part of their job, and they decided that it would be a good idea for them to take that information and sell it to a third party. Um, that information um, will probably be used for some kind of criminal act or identity threat, theft or to carry out um, some further crime against the individuals um, with who, whose data was shared. But this just goes to prove a point that it's not just the bad guys in China or you know around the world who are sitting there in front of a computer trying to get into your business. These were people who were on the payroll at Fifth Third Bank, and these employees decided you know that they were going to do this. And Fifth Third Bank didn't find out until the information was already outside of their network. There are plenty of things you can do from a security standpoint to prevent this information from leaving your company. And if you if it does, you should be alerted to it. So however they got it out, whether they printed it out on a piece of paper and walked out the door with it after their shift, they dropped it on uh, Google Drive or Dropbox or one of those cloud file sharing services, which is typically how we see most of the stuff go down. Um, you should have a, an alert or you should be blocking access to these services from within your network. Easy things you can do to prevent you from becoming a uh, public relations nightmare. But it's also no good, Fifth Third Bank, when you send a vague email to your customers 
basically brushing it under the rug like it really wasn't a big deal and you're gonna just offer credit monitoring for a year if you're interested in it. I, I have an increasingly huge problem with the fact that businesses think that if we just offer a year of free credit monitoring that you know the, the breach is okay, it's fine. Our customers will, will, will go on. We as business people, as a business community, as an entire country need to do better by our citizens and the people that trust us and allow us to do business. You need to protect their data. You need to protect their information. And it can't be just an afterthought and, oh, we'll just give credit monitoring and we will offer free credit monitoring to these individuals who may have been breached. It's not a good plan. It's not a good way to do business. And if you do have a breach, be upfront about it. Let your customers know what happened. Let them know the ramifications of what the problem is and let them know what you're going to do to prevent that problem from happening in your business in the future. Um, Relation Insurance, uh, they, they reported a privacy breach this week. Um, they are a specialty insurance broker, um, and they had an employee who had their email account compromised for two days. So somebody was sitting in their email account, logging in, probably through webmail, um, logging in and accessing this employee's email. It just so happened that this employee's email was ripe with um, personally identifiable information of the people he worked with. Um, so when the perpetrator was able to access the email, he was able to filter through the email search and find all kinds of good information that is now for sale on the dark web. Um, they determined in August that this occurred. They didn't realize it was a problem until October. So it was several months. And now they are in the news and they're working with their customers to tell them that this is a problem and um, that they will work with them to try to recoup or prevent any damage to happening to them. Um, several other breaches this week. Um, we had a laptop theft that um, contained personally identifiable healthcare information and Medicaid information um, on computers uh, that were stolen from a healthcare company. Uh, and, th and this happens. Um, personally identifiable information of about 700,000 people, um, uh, names, addresses, phone numbers, and Medicaid ID numbers. Um, from uh, Gridworks, an Oregon-based company. Um, and this is uh, something that happens and something that should be considered as part of your cybersecurity plan. Laptops get stolen. Laptops get left at airports. Laptops get left in Uber cars and taxi cabs. And you should have a plan in place for when that does happen if you don't get that device back um, or make sure it's locked down so that somebody who does get it can't use it and they deem it worthless and hopefully they go, well, this is worthless to me. Maybe I'll just return it. Um, good, strong passwords on your Windows logins. Two-factor using apps like Duo on your Windows login. So even if they do guess the password or crack the password, they need to have your cell phone unlocked in front of them with the authenticator app open and log in with the with the code or allow allow the computer to log in when prompted on the phone um, have two-factor on the laptop when um, you know if you if the laptops are out there um, and you have a lot of people on the road you're going to want to encrypt those drives the drives being encrypted prevents somebody from pulling out the drive in the event they can't log into the computer or windows they can't pull out the drive and start looking for that information. It's all encrypted. It means nothing to them. But when these laptops were not encrypted, they did not have strong passwords. When they were um, stolen, people were able to then uh, get the information that was on the laptops. So again, prevention is the best cure here and making sure that we have these things in place 
as standard policy so that when an event does happen, you're already protected and you're not scrambling to clean up a big fat mess. Um, Online uh, banking users were targeted by a malware campaign. So this is the Metamorpho banking Trojan that was um, sent via uh, phishing emails that claim to contain information pertaining to the re recipients, urging them to download a zip file, which is a typical phishing campaign that we see when the zip file is then um, uh, opened and ran. Uh, malicious software is then executed on the Windows system, at which time the malware functions as a process that monitors for a number of banks' um, website URLs being typed into the keyboard. So essentially, it's a keylogger, but it's a keylogger that only alerts the threat actors when you type in the bank's um, URL. So there was another uh, breach this week, and it was the online banking users targeted by a uh, Trojan malware campaign called Metamorpho. Metamorpho is a malware that is delivered via a phishing email that is usually related to some kind of transaction that these hackers know that you may have been involved in or some kind of business that you've done business with in the past to make it seem more real. When you get that email, um, it has a zip file. If you open the zip file and it executes malware on a Windows system, which then um, looks for the user to type in certain banking keywords. When you type in those banking keywords like wellsfargo.com, it sends an alert to the threat actors to let them know, hey, this individual that has this malware on their system just typed in one of your keywords. And then it sends them the um, the rest of the string of characters that you typed in after you typed in wellsfargo.com, which is typically what? Your username and followed by your password. So then the uh, threat actors now have your Wells Fargo username and password that they can then immediately turn around and try to log in as you. So there's a couple of things you can do here to protect yourself. Number one, most banks, most major banks have some kind of two-factor authentication to prove it's you when you log in. Wells Fargo has, every time I log into my Wells Fargo account, I have to get a phone call or a text message from the bank to allow me to get into my online account. No one can get in any other way. I want it that way. I don't want people being able to log into my bank account and transfer money and things like that. And I want, and I am okay with the inconvenience of having to wait and type in a code every time I want to log into my bank. I just like that extra layer of security and most people should so they can prevent if this malware is on your system and you don't know it, at least you have an extra layer of security to prevent this person from getting into your account and doing any more damage. Um, but always be you know, mindful that phishing attacks happen. People try to fish you and to get and to click on things. So make sure you're you're vigilant and that you don't click on everything that's sent to you and you inspect it and you look at it and you make sure it's legitimate. Look at the from address, make sure it's from an act, the actual email address that it says the person who sent it to you is. Um, look at the links, make sure if it's a Wells Fargo bank uh, email, make sure the links go back to wellsfargo.com and not some random uh, you know, domain that's in another country or something crazy like that. These are little things that you can do to um, not aid these threat actors into perpetrating your, an attack on you even further or perpetrating other attacks against your organization or your company. Um, uh, tens of thousands of soccer fans were exposed by a Brazilian leaky server. Um, there was a leaky S3 bucket, and an S3 bucket is basically a, a storage uh, uh, a, a storage unit for Amazon Web Services. Um, it, it, this wasn't a Amazon problem. This was the person who owned the buckets problem and just left it open to the internet. Um, 
which you know isn't uncommon when you're in development phases, but when you move to a production phase, you should make sure your stuff is fairly locked down um, and you shouldn't have real information in your testing environment. When you have real information in an environment, it should be locked down even in a testing environment if you're using real data. Um, so the uh, S3 bucket was wide open to the internet and it was about 12, uh, or 18 million uh, supporters of this Brazilian soccer club. Um, all their information is now for sale on the dark web because this um, this this database server was not secured. Um, so uh, uh, Doppelmeyer is a new ransomware um, that sells victim information on the dark web. Um, it's ransomware that encrypts the, sense of, uh, encrypts the system, but also steals the information, um, sends it back to the attackers, and now the attackers are not only encrypting your information and trying to get money from, from you, but they are also taking your information that they just encrypted, and now they're selling it on the dark web. Um, so there's a lot of different things happening with these attacks and how the threat actors are making money. It's not just they're locking your files and you have to pay the ransom and get them back and everything's everything's good. And, you know, even though you didn't have backups and all that, you paid the ransomware and you got your files back and now you're able to go back to work. Um, and then you look over here and you see that the threat actors now have all your customer information for sale on the dark web. And what you thought was going to be a quiet and and you know uh, simple breach to get through, now you're dealing with a public relations nightmare. Plus, you're probably going to be on the hook because you never disclosed the breach in the appropriate amount of time. Um, Space Jet, uh, another one, suffers a breach affecting 1.2 million customers. Um, this is actually a uh, unnamed security researcher who reached out to them because he found something um, and was able to access data, um, personally identifiable information of the customers of, uh, of, of SpiceJet. Um, he reached out to SpiceJet, proved to them that he had this information and he heard nothing back. Um, when a security researcher or a white hat hacker um, reaches out to your firm saying that you have this problem, I'm making you aware of this problem and you don't do anything about it, they're going to give you a certain amount of time to reply. And if you don't, then they're going to release what they found to the public to basically let the public know that as a company, you're not being responsible about security and securing the personally identifiable information that your customers give to you in order to do business with you. So. If by chance you happen to get breached by a white hat hacker who gives you the breach information, do yourself a favor and reply to the guy or gal and let them know that you're going to do something about it. Don't just sit on it and think, oh, well, this person is just trying to make money off of me. Most of them aren't. Most of them are just doing it because they enjoy it and they're letting you know you have a problem. They're not saying, hey, I'm gonna release this information if you don't give me money. That's typically not how it goes down. I'm not saying that not everyone doesn't operate like that. Some people may, um, but for the most part, they're just giving you the information, giving you time to take care of it and reply to them. And when you do and you reply to them and you tell them you're gonna take measures to secure it, that's all they're really looking for. If you ignore it, they're going to release it, it's going to become public, and it's going to be a bigger issue for you because in SpiceJet's case, if they didn't take care of the problem by the time this was made public, real hackers are going to jump on that and see if they can make some money off the vulnerability. So again, these this Week in Breach video series that I do is more about you seeing how frequent this happens, the different ways that people are attacked and the different mechanisms and ways that hackers make money and exploit businesses on a weekly and daily basis. Because like I said, and like you've heard it before, you heard at the beginning of this video, breaches are going to happen. They're a reality that we have to face and we have to protect our businesses from. It's not a matter of if, but it's a matter of when your business will be attacked. Will you be prepared? Will you have the things in place? Will you've taken the measures ahead of time to prevent the attack from being worse than it could be had you not? It's Brian Horning, Exact IT CEO. 
If you have any questions about anything I talked about in this video or you want to reach out and talk to us about concerns you might have in your business around security and compliance, please go to our website and fill out the contact us form and I will reach out to you via email or messenger if you give me uh, your um, Facebook messenger information I will send I will send you a message over Facebook as well I love helping people solve the security problems in their business so if I can help you in any way please feel free to reach out today thank you for watching this video from exact IT solutions and if you like what you saw here today please give us the video a thumbs up and if you have any questions or you want to comment about anything that you saw in our video please do so in the comment section below and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and if you want to get alerted when we upload new videos to the channel, please hit the little alert bell and hopefully YouTube will notify you when we post new content. Um, check out the link in the description below for any more information relevant to this video. And if you want to know anything about our services or how we can help your company with IT, please check out our website at xitx.com.